In this video, we'll explore how we can quickly and easily label GIS data, leveraging the Map3D functionality that we have built into Civil 3D. So in this case, I have imported some road center lines from a GIS data source using the map import command. And while it's not necessary for the purpose of this demonstration, I did choose to import the GIS data of these entities. So if I pick on any one of these lines and open up the properties palette, you'll see that we have all of the GIS data associated with that line, including in this case, the full name of the road. And while it's great that I can pick on any one of these lines inside of this drawing and see its name, it'll be far more useful for me if I could see that name as a label inside of this drawing. So how can we do just that? Well, the secret to that is to leverage the map task pane. And if you don't see the map task pane inside of your Civil 3D, first thing you'll want to do is make sure you have the planning and analysis workspace set current inside of your session of Civil 3D. And then from there, jump over to the view tab of the ribbon. On the palettes panel, you'll find a button called map task pane. You can click on that to toggle the map task pane on or off as necessary. Go ahead and toggle that on. And once it's turned on, go ahead and switch over to the display manager. Now from this display manager tab, there's a bunch of stuff that we can do, but most importantly right now is the ability to connect to data. So I'm gonna click on this manage data content button, the data button. This lists several ways that we can connect to data. We're just gonna choose the simplest one of all, the one at the very top, which is connect to data. Clicking on that is going to open up my data connect palette, and this will show all of the different types of data that we can connect to within Map3D. Now, which of these you choose will largely depend on what format the data you're trying to add to your drawing is saved in. In my case, the data I have is a shape file, so I'm going to choose the add SHP or add shape connection here. With that chosen, I'll go ahead and pick on shape right here to browse out to the file that I'd like to display in my drawing, which is this carriageway shape file. With that selected, I will choose open. And with that file specified, I'll click on connect. Once Map3D connects to that particular layer, first things first, make sure the checkbox next to its name is in fact checked on. And the next thing we'll want to do is actually display it inside of my drawing. And for that, we have two options and we will specify which one of those I want with this button right here. Now, the default value for this is add to map and be careful with that because it will add the entire layer that we have selected, which in this case is the road center lines for the entire city or county. That is far more information than I want to bring into my drawing. So what I'm going to do is click on this drop down menu here and instead of choosing the default or what's typically the default of add to map, I'm going to be careful to choose add to map with query. Clicking on that is going to open up my create query dialog where I can create as complex and advanced of a query as I would like, or as simple of one that I'd like to create as well. Lucky for us, all we need to do is create a very simple query based on location. And in fact, right here along the top, you'll see we have an option of locate on map. So in my case, I'm going to define a query that is based on touching any part of a rectangle I'm going to draw inside of this drawing. So I'll choose rectangle. That is going to take me back to my drawing area. And here I'll just draw a box or a rectangle around my center lines in this drawing, kind of roughly following the center lines I already have there. That looks great to me. So with that in place, I'll just click OK. And Map3D is going to think for a moment as it connects to that GIS data. Now it is going to display all of the center lines in this drawing in a random color. What color it chooses is kind of randomly chosen. In this case, it shows kind of this yellowish color. And as a feature data object, we can choose how I'd like to display this inside of my drawing. Now we can do things like change the color from yellow to red or purple or whatever other color that I'd like. But more importantly, by leveraging something known as a style, we can also do things like add text. That's exactly what I would like to do. So I'm going to pick on my carriageway layer here in Display Manager and then click on the Style button right here. This is going to open up our Style Editor and every feature data object or FDO or Map3D object, you might call it, that we connect to 
is going to have a default thematic rule. And we can, again, get as simple or as complex as we would like here. But in our case, we can keep things quite simple. I'm just going to use the default thematic rule. Now, this style column would let me do things like change how thick the center lines display and what color they display on and anything related to the display of the geometry itself. But you'll notice a couple doors down here, we have the option of feature label. Right now, that's set to none, but we can fix that by clicking on the ellipsis right here. Clicking the ellipsis is going to open up my style label dialog where we can go ahead and add a label to this GIS layer. So with that, clicking add layer or label, we'll go ahead and make sure that's selected. And we're going to work through all of the settings that I need to set up here. First is going to be how do I want to size the text? I want to size it based on real world units, so my map units. So I'm going to choose size context as map. For the unit, I can choose what unit I'd like to do. My drawing is in feet, so we're going to match that to feet. Next, we can choose what type of label I'd like to add. In my case, I can choose between maybe plain text or multi-line text. I'll go ahead and choose M text here. Continuing on, we can choose what font I'd like. Arial looks great to me. And then the size, what you specify here is going to be in feet, just like regular AutoCAD text. And again, what size you choose will largely depend on what type of plan it is that you're trying to create. In my case, maybe I'll do 50 feet as an example. So I'll type in 50 here. And as I continue on under text content, you'll see right now it's set to use static text and it's just set to text. If I would click apply right now, it is going to add that text throughout my drawing, but it's just going to be a black and it's literally just going to say text on every single feature of my drawing. That's not what I want. So first off, let's go ahead and change this to a color that will display a little bit better on a dark background like white. And let's change use static text to one of my GIS properties. So when we pick on that drop down menu, we can access any of the data associated with that object. In this case, one of those properties is full name. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. I'll click apply and then close. And you'll notice I now have labels throughout my drawing. If I zoom in, you'll see that all of my roads have now been labeled with the information from my GIS data. And this is great. However, we do have one small problem and that is all of this text is map 3D text or FDO, feature data object text, not just regular old AutoCAD multi-line text. So how do I solve that problem? Well, what we need to do is navigate over to the annotate tab of, again, the planning and analysis workspace. And here under the map annotation panel, we have a tool called label to text. And that is going to allow me, if I click on that, I can choose that I want to convert the map 3D labels that I have here to M text. What layer do I want? I only have one in here. It's the carriageway. We'll go ahead and create a new AutoCAD layer. That's fine. Or I could place it on an existing one. And then in my case, we're going to go ahead and just label everything with that um, layer. So all of the center lines that I've imported, or I could zoom in and just do within the window. Again, we're going to use all existing lab labels from the selected feature layer. With that, I'll go ahead and choose OK. And Map3D will once again think for a quick moment as it converts all of those map 3d labels into just regular autocad text so if i pick on this now let me open up properties for a moment you can see that this is just regular old autocad m text and i can do anything i would like with it here including changing the text style or the layer that it's on or any of those other properties for, but from here on this text behaves like any other multi-line text um, object that you might add to an AutoCAD drawing. So there you have it, a quick look at how we can quickly and easily label GIS data inside of Civil 3D, leveraging its Map3D functionality.